Hey guys, what's happening? This is Chaplain Bo, and hope you guys are doing well. And wish I could see you. Um, hopefully it'll be soon. We'll all be getting going back into the hockey world soon. But now that you guys got the downtime, it's kind of cool that we get a chance to maybe do this just in a different way uh, as well. So this is actually my office, and uh, you guys haven't seen it ever before, but um, this is a little bit of my world until I get out where you guys are at over at the rink. But I wanted to give you some things to uh, think about, maybe some things that will help you too during the downtime, because uh, this is a time you guys get to uh, just kind of take a break, maybe hang out with some friends and family, um, but also assess kind of where you're at in the season and work on some things. So hopefully you guys are uh, getting in some uh, quiet time as well and just time to think, assess, and um, kind of move forward too with where you guys are at in uh, the hockey uh, uh, season. It's kind of the grunt of it all right now, right? But um, um, I was going to read from Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, let you guys just kind of take a uh, let this impact you. It says, and over all these virtues put on love, which is the bond of perfect unity. Um, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, for to this you are called as members of one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. A couple really cool points here that you guys can work on. Um, and that is, first of all, it says the main virtue it's talking about here, and there's many virtues, by the way. There's humility, right? There's compassion, that's a virtue. Um, there's giving, there's the virtue of grace, uh, there's a virtue of being merciful, and the greatest virtue, though, is love. Um, and it talks about that above every virtue, it says put on love. So think of it like putting on your clothes, putting on your hockey clothes. Instead of that, you put on love instead. And remember, love, you can find a good example of love by looking to Jesus. If you look to Jesus, you'll see the perfect example of love. The guy lay down his life for you. So that, that would be a good way to start thinking, oh, well, how do I see love? Well, it's laying down my life for one another, caring for one another, that kind of thing. How can I help one another? Because when you help another human, you help you too. And, um, and so that's the idea there, put on love. And that is the perfect bond um, of unity. So if you want unity on a team, you gotta be a loving team. You gotta, you gotta have a goal, but you gotta be loving towards that goal, right? If people are hating one another in, and they all want to win the Stanley Cup, but they're all hating one another, then it's not going to work out even though they have that goal of winning the Stanley Cup. There's got to be some kind of brotherly love, what we call phileo, where we get the term Philadelphia um, um, from. So when you think of Philadelphia Flyers, that's the Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. Phileo, we have a love that keeps us in unity. So work on that unity during your off time. Maybe you guys got, maybe there's bitterness. Maybe there's things that, you know, you just don't get along good with that person on the, on the team. You might never get along good with that person on the team. We don't always get along with everybody. But whatever you can do to be at peace, to be in that unity place, that loving place, you do what you need to do, man. Maybe you gotta apologize for something. Maybe that's on your heart and that's kind of bothering you. Or maybe just humble yourself, that's another virtue, and just take care of that. So that's what it's talking about. Having virtue be the top thing of love. That's the big virtue. The other thing is it says is let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts uh, for to this you were called. And you know, in a time like right now where I don't know if you guys have been out lately, but we had to send a staff worker over at Costco the last two days. And he said the line to get into Costco, like when it opened up, was literally around the building. It was insane. And uh, today, I guess they had to call the police because people are just going nuts in that place. And what it tells me is a lot of people don't have a lot of peace. Um, a lot of people are absolutely freaked out um, and, and a lot of fears in their heart and in their life. And that's super sad. Man, that's, that's not a good place to be at in your life to where you feel like you gotta 
you got a grip and you got a, you know, nothing's wrong with getting stuff at Costco, don't get me wrong. But man, if you're, if you're hating other people, you know, and some people are like that, man, they got their guns, they're getting ready, they're gonna take people down, man, but at least they're gonna stay alive. And uh, it's just such a weird mentality and it's not a peaceful one. And it certainly doesn't help much um, as a society. And so we need to be people with peace. And Jesus is called the Prince of Peace in the Bible. And there's a reason, and that is because what Jesus did on that cross was make peace for you, between you and the Father. And Father as in God, the Father. And the reason why is because there is no peace between God the Father and this earth. And that's why God isn't present here with us now, because there is a separation between us and the Father. But there is, He didn't leave us to be left on our own. He actually sent His Son to deal with something that is our sinfulness and our disobedience. And because of that, man, it's great. We can actually go to the Father now and not have to worry about any kind of repercussions or some kind of wrath that he has towards us because he loves us and he loves us because of what his son has done for us it's kind of like this if you know the son you can get in the house and you can eat my stuff in my refrigerator and why because you know the son you know my son but if you just walked into my home and i don't know you my son don't know you and you got into the refrigerator then i would be like what are you doing in the house that would be weird and you wouldn't be welcome. See, you're welcome through the work of the son. Because someone has a, a relationship with my son or my daughter, for that matter, you can come in my house and you can sit and watch TV and you can hang out. And, and so that's what Jesus is. He is the son of God. As we have relation with him, we can have access to the Father and everything that the Father has. And so we can have a true peace you know, where a lot of people just don't have that peace, man. They're just warring in their life all the time. And I hope you guys just continue to learn to pray too. And, and thank God for the son that you have a relationship and you can have a relationship with the son. Because that brings you a lot of peace. You know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me, except through the son. That's right. So he is the door. He calls himself the door. He calls himself the light. I am the light of the world. He calls himself the gate. And um, and so and he also calls himself the good shepherd. So when you come to Jesus, you're coming to someone who gives you a lot of peace. And you don't have to worry about being unforgiven for anything you've done wrong. You are forgiven because of your relationship with the Son. And that brings you a ton of peace in life. So it says, let God's words dwell in you richly. So during the downtime, you might be able to just check out and get into a book. Maybe just read or listen to some of these little devos, what I call devos, devotions, you know, that um, little chapel time, video times with you guys. And uh, just get some things in your mind that hopefully encourage you, move you forward to in your life just as a man. And, and then it says, and admonish one another with all wisdom. And that means help other, help each other out with wisdom. You know, I, as a chaplain, you get a chance to be around a lot of players. And, and you, you can tell that players need to be encouraged. They need to be helped out. They also need to be talked to and corrected. We know that too. We, they need that as well. And, but that's all a part of wisdom. Uh, wisdom is the ability to understand when to do this and when to do that. And when someone's down and out and they're discouraged, you don't want to come up to them and say, hey man, you're playing like crap. <laughs> that might not be the best time to do that, right? That's not wise. It might be that time where you need to just come alongside of them and encourage them, let them know, like, man, that they'll get better and they'll get going and it'll get happening again. And just keep working hard, you know, and that's all you can do, um, you know, but you'll be okay. And then sometimes when they're, you know, sometimes you do need to come alongside of a person when they're too cocky or they're not doing things correctly. You might need to just hit what we call admonish them. Just say, hey, you know, and, um, and then talk, um, you know, and help them see maybe some of their, some of their pride issues. But, you know, we got to use wisdom and just think through that before we just launch, right? So it says do that with each other, just like you do it in the family. You know, you do it in your life in general on a team. 
Um, and the last thing I'll, I'll mention is this thing that talks about at the end of this little section about with hand songs, do it like singing songs and stuff like that. And it's amazing that if you have issues with depression or you find yourself on what we call in melancholy areas, you gotta look at what you put into your mind. It's super important, you know? So look at the music you listen to. Um, I like you guys. I grew up around music, Southern California. I went to school for music um, at Cal State University Northridge. So I definitely am a music guy, but I always have to watch what I'm putting into my mind. That at times I could put in too much negativity and I could start seeing the world through it. It's just like when you watch the news all the time. You start looking at everything through the news lens. You start judging everybody and like say, man, they're so stupid. They're such idiots, da 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 da. And it starts kind of breeding like a negativity. Sometimes you just gotta kill the noise and, and, and just put in things that are more positive to you. You know, things that uh, are definitely more with good virtues in them. Um, so kind of be careful with what you feed in yourself, you know, during the downtime. So that's my little Devo to you guys. Um, hopefully we'll do a couple of these. I don't know how long this is gonna be. Um, flu season ends in three weeks, I think. So, you know what, in all, in all intents and purposes, the virus, you know, by that time should be moving on out, you know, especially as we heat up here in Tucson and we're kind of blessed, right? Cause it's gonna get hot and viruses, like flu viruses don't dig, uh, you know, 100 degree weather too much. So, so hopefully this thing kicks out pretty quick. Um, anyway, guys, uh, you guys are always in my heart. And again, if you want anybody else, you think someone would like to be a part of these, just let them know to, um, you can give, give me their email and, uh, and I can put them on this list because it's kind of easy, right? It just goes right to your inbox, that kind of thing. Anyway, we'll talk to you later. Okay, take care, guys. Bye-bye.